<laughs> Wait a minute. The following weapon archetypes will have their mouse and keyboard recoil adjusted closer to controller. What? What? So here we are, yet another live TWAB read. This one is for January 28th, 2021. Thank you for joining me. This week at Bungie, we introduce seasonal challenges. Welcome to the second to last TWAB of Season of the Hunt. Many of you have been navigating the secrets of the Harbinger, Harbinger I can talk, mission, uncovering randomly rolled hawk moons and earning the Radiant Accipiter exotic ship. I think I have that one. Content-wise, we're coming to a close for the season, and we are incredibly excited for what's to come in just a few short weeks. We've been covering some upcoming quality of life changes to D2, like the return of Umbral Engrams, but it's almost time to take a peek at fresh content. For the love of God, Bungie, give me the fresh content, please. Season of the Redacted trailer goes live on February 2nd, 2021. Chat, mark your calendar this Tuesday. Season of the Redacted goes live. Sweet. Okay, before we get there, we have a new feature to cover. Seasonal challenges and a round of weapon-focused sandbox changes to walk through. Oh, happy day. As a warning, this is a pretty large amount of information. Oh God, in a small space. We've joked about meaty twabs before, but this one may feel like a bit overwhelming if you rush through it. Let's take it slow, step by step. Get through it together in one piece. Okay, I'm ready. Introducing seasonal challenges. Over the last year, we've been looking at ways in which we can reduce the amount of FOMO, aka fear of missing out, in D2. We've recently made some changes to seasons and how seasonal content is available throughout a given year of D2. This week, we're looking to Bounties and Bright Dust, introducing a new system, not only to remove FOMO, but give fresh ways to earn XP and alternate rewards. Okay, I'm listening. To walk us through the ins and outs of seasonal changes, we pass the mic to the development team. Dev team. During production of Beyond Light, I'm not doing the voice, we started looking at the problems of bounty fatigue, good call, and FOMO, as well as seasonable, seasonal legibility, i.e. what is in a season, and how to, how to I engage, hmm, how to I engage with it when I log in? <laughs> we created a few goals which we believe will improve the experience, provide a guide to new returning and veteran players for what to do today slash this week. Guide the player through the seasonal content week over week. Encourage players to engage with complexities and nuances of the seasonal activity and rituals. Reduce the penalties on XP and Bright Dust for missing a given week. Okay. To solve these goals, we are introducing a new pursuit type for players, seasonal challenges. The seasonal challenges live on their own page and are accessed through the quest log or season pass and are separated by week. Interesting. So here we are taking a look at a preview of what seasonal challenges will be. I don't know why Bungie felt the need to block out only these four, hmm, probably because it has something to do with season of the redacted gotcha okay week one so they break it down by week interesting okay here's a quick breakdown of how this feature works every week for the first 10 weeks of a season between 3 and 10 new challenges appear automatically for players some of the challenges deal with the seasonal content i.e probably the ones that are blanked out up here others push players to complete strikes, gambit, and PVP, or to focus on non-activity focused destiny rituals like gaining power, unlocking seasonal artifact mods, or improving guns and armor, okay? These challenges can only be completed once per account, but once they become available, these challenges can be completed at any time before the end of the season and do not need to be started or picked up from a vendor. As an example, if a player doesn't play 
for weeks two through four, they can return on week five and have all of those challenges waiting for them. Completing each challenge awards XP, contributing to your season pass ranks. Other rewards could be bright dust, seasonal currency, or other interesting items. Hmm, okay. In moving away from weekly bounties, which were restricted to broad objectives tied to ritual activities, we have taken more leeway with creating some interesting or more difficult challenges. These may be things you're already doing or things that test your ability. Some examples include defeating primeval envoys, envoys in Gambit, defeating enemies in Nightfall, the ordeal with a seasonal weapon, gaining infamy or valor, acquiring the ritual weapon and its cosmic, excuse me, its cosmetic ornaments, winning rounds in Trials of Osiris, completing a Grandmaster Nightfall. Trying to rub it in with that last one, Bungie? Not all the challenges will require that level of accomplishment, but the harder or longer that challenge is, the more experience it rewards, okay? Challenges that focus on the seasonal activity and ritual mostly need the season pass to complete, but most of the ritual-focused challenges can be completed without the season pass. Overall, roughly 60% of the seasonal challenges do not require the season pass. With the changes above, we are removing weekly bounties from three ritual vendors, really. Zavala, Shax, and Drifter. Banshee44 and the Seasonal Vendor. These vendors will still have daily bounties, which reward XP, and the three ritual vendors will still have repeatable bounties for those of you who want to pursue additional XP and Bright Dust. Okay, that's fair. Lastly, most of the challenges disappear after the season they were introduced, and anything that isn't claimed will be lost. We don't add any new challenges after week 10, which should give everyone a few weeks to clean up any challenges they didn't finish. Any challenge that rewards unique or seasonal items, currencies, lore books, seasonal weapons, etc., can be completed as long as the seasonal activity is in the game, but XP awarded for completing the challenge will only be available during the season it was introduced. Aha, okay. Let's talk about Bright Dust. Back before Bright Dust launched, or excuse me, back before Beyond Light launched, we discussed some of the goals around the changes to Bright Dust. As a refresher, we wanted to change the way you earn Bright Dust and move more towards account-specific paths to give players with only one character significantly more Bright Dust than they've been earning over the last year. In Season 13, we'll be continuing to move forward with these goals by adding Bright Dust onto seasonal challenges. Okay, fair enough. Since you no longer have to purchase weekly ritual bounties, each of the Strike, Crucible, and Gambit seasonal challenges will award between 75 and 300 Bright Dust. We are also introducing an end of season Bright Dust bonus. If you complete nearly all of the seasonal challenges, we are awarding a single 4,000 Bright Dust pile. Additionally, each ritual vendor challenge, complete eight bounties, awards 120 Bright Dust for each character who completed it each week. And because this is prompted by the removal of weekly bounties, the only seasonal challenges that will be awarding Bright Dust are the ones that both Season Pass owners and free players can complete. Here's a quick breakdown of how much Bright Dust you should expect to earn over the course of Season 13. Okay, seasonal challenges, Bright Dust, all players can do that. Free seasonal activities, 6K. Seasonal Extra Pile, 4K, total 10K. Season Pass Bright Dust, Free Path, 7.5K. Paid Path, 3K, AKA every player who owns the Season Pass. Total 10,500 Bright Dust, Weekly Ritual Vendor Challenge Bright Dust. Everybody can do that. 120 Bright Dust per Ritual Vendor per character each week. 1440 total if completing all required weekly challenges over the course of Season 13. Whew, that's a lot of Bright Dust. Additionally, we still plan to offer weekly and repeatable Bright Dust bounties for seasonal events, giving you a bit more Bright Dust towards desired rewards. As a final note, please be sure to claim all seasonal challenges that award Bright Dust prior to the end of a season. Once a season ends, associated challenges and their Bright Dust rewards will expire and can no longer be claimed. It's always exciting when we bring a new feature online for D2. We hope that the changed, wait, we hope that the changes detailed above 
make it easier to create goals to complete each week. As always, we're eager to hear your feedback. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Once you start finishing your challenges, all right, people, you know the deal. Next season, do the challenges, tell Bungie what you think, and don't do it like an asshole. Okay, back to the sandbox. Damn, it's a big twab, dude. Every season, we have a collection of changes to the D2 sandbox to spice things up a bit. This season, we're making some targeted changes to weapon archetypes. Hell yeah, that needs some love as well as beginning some preparations for crossplay. Oh, Jesus Christ in heaven. Dev team, in preparation for crossplay, coming later in the year. Okay, all right, we're, we're getting information. We're making some changes to the recoil stat. Ooh, this is interesting. Currently, several weapon archetypes have their recoil reduced by around 40% depending on the archetype. When using M and K, shocker. We all knew that. This results in an issue where players on mouse and keyboard are able to largely ignore the stability weapon stat. I've been saying it for years. Creating unintended discrepancies in weapon performance between controllers and M and K. Ain't that the truth? The following weapon archetypes will have their mouse and keyboard recoil adjusted. Oh. Wait a minute. The following weapon archetypes will have their mouse and keyboard recoil adjusted closer to controller. What? What? I thought they were gonna go the other way. I thought they were gonna say, oh no. Oh, the community is gonna be mad is hand cannon. Oh no. <laughs> the community is gonna be so mad. <laughs> Oh no, I thought they were gonna be like, dude, okay, we're gonna make it so that there's less recoil for controller to bring it closer to M and K. They went the other direction. Holy cow. Oh no. Okay, auto rifles, scout rifles, pulse rifles, SMGs, hand cannons, and machine guns. If you play on M and K, dude, get ready for the recoil. <laughs> In the case of pulse rifles, submachine guns, and machine guns, we will also be introducing some buffs, thank god. In some cases, these weapons will have less recoil across both controller and m &K input methods compared to what's in the game today. Submachine guns are largely outclassed by auto rifles. Merc has been saying that for months. <laughs> at medium range, and sidearms at short range, with player feedback often mentioning how hard they are to control. True. To address the feedback, we are introducing the following change. Reduced camera movement when firing a submachine gun by 24%. Okay, I like that. Pulse rifles with the M&K changes were kicking a little too much. Reduced camera movement from firing a pulse by 7%, okay. Machine guns with the mouse and keyboard changes were kicking a little too much. Reduced camera movement from firing a machine gun, 9.5%. We will pay close attention to how these changes play out when they go live and plan to revisit individual archetypes in a future update as needed. Outside of recoil adjustments, we will also be tuning a few weapon archetypes in Season 13. Looking through back-end data and community feedback, aka complaining, we landed on the following. Buffs, rocket launchers, oh, they're terrible, have fallen behind other heavy weapons in most measures of effectiveness. We're pushing them more into a burst damage role. Increased rocket launcher damage by 30%. Exotic rocket launchers have been adjusted individually and are affected by this change to different degrees. Paired with the buffs to reserves from last season, we're hoping you'll explode many more things in season 13. I'm sure we will. Fusion rifle usage is very low. Shocker, when you have this fucking monstrosity running around. Mother of God. Increased fusion rifle damage fall off. Start distance based on the range stat. Okay, I'm gonna have to talk to cool guy about that. 6% with zero range. 16% with 100 range. Only 16%? I guess better that than nothing. Reduced camera movement from firing a fusion rifle by 9.5%. Okay. 
breach grenade launcher usage is very low <laughs> outside of mountaintop. We believe part of the reason is that the loop of hold the trigger to arm, then release to detonate is challenging to execute. Challenge, is it? It's not really that challenging. Uh, particularly since projectiles can bounce off targets if the trigger is held short. Breach grenade launcher projectiles will now detonate on impact with a character, even if holding the trigger. Seems like kind of a minor change, but okay, sure. Nerfs. While sniper rifle usage has dropped in PvP, we've observed that it's hard to challenge someone with a sniper rifle. Yes, for the love of God, even in trials where, like, there's no forced movement, you can sit at the back of the map forever in trials with a sniper. I hate it. Even if you get the first shot on an enemy, they can often respond and win the fight. True. Increased ADS flinch to snipers when taking damage from other players. Okay. That's an interesting change. I can't help but notice that they're not mentioning by how much. They are hiding the number. I wonder if that means it's big. Swords are extremely dominant in PvE. <laughs> you don't say. At this time, 65% of players are using swords for the majority of gameplay encounters in D2, while we are introducing a buff to rocket launchers to make them a bit more enticing. We feel that swords do too much damage compared to other options. Reduced sword damage by 15%. Percent. Okay. Exotic changes and bug fixes. Some exotic weapons lose their buffs when you switch weapons, which is intended. They would also lose their buffs when pulling out your ghost shell. <laughs> I did not know that. Which is not intended. Fixed that issue on these weapons. Ace of Spades, Terrible, and the Hawk Moon. Good. Uh, Borealis and Hardlight now have a custom quite short animation for switching damage type. Duality. Increased damage fall off distance by 1.25 meters while both firing from the hip and aiming down sight. Interesting. Reduced maximum buff stacks from seven to five. Each stack now grants more of a damage bonus extended buff duration slightly. I wonder if that is gonna push duality closer to chaperone in PVP or if that'll make it a more appealing option for PVE. Sturm will once again reload any equipped special weapon. Oh, Drew's gonna be happy about that. Sturm will once again reload any equipped special slot weapon on a kill, provided the special weapons clip isn't full already, and there's available reserve ammo. Fixed an issue that was preventing Merciless from increasing its charge rate on non-lethal hits. Lull. Oh, and before we go, we are planning to take a quick tuning pass on the Arbalist. Oh, Mother. Someone call Joey. Someone call Joey. You did it, buddy. We we did it, Joey. <laughs> the arbalist down. <laughs> this won't be ready in time for February 9th. <gasps> but we are expecting to have, ooh, it's gonna be touched later in season 13. You heard it here, people. The Arby is getting touched at some point in season 13. Now we know it can be difficult to understand the scale of buffs and nerfs without having these changes in your hands, true. Not to mention, there will be some new perks for you to hunt Ooh, as you start navigating content in Season of the Redacted. As always, we're excited to see these changes out in the wild on February 9th and we'll be eager to hear your feedback. Be careful what you wish for, Bungie. <laughs> Crimson Days, each year, my chair is so squeaky. Crimson Days. Each year, we look to February as a time to celebrate the bonds of friendship throughout the community. Guardians have come to know this celebration as Crimson Days. It was one of our first seasonal events in D1, a tradition we carried to D2. While there was a great enjoyment of Crimson Days, we feel that it's been missing the mark in terms of quality over the last few years. As such, we've made the decision to discontinue, oh no! Anno, no Valentine's Day, Destiny. I know, sad. Oh, that's sad, bro. They are discontinuing Crimson Days. While we'll miss the event, this move will allow us to maintain oh, focus for... Hey, I'm in the middle of reading here. Oh. <laughs> All right, while we'll miss the event, this move will allow us to maintain focus for alternate seasonal offerings, ranging from quests to activities and more. We have quite a bit planned for a season of the Redacted, and our hope is that we've maintained or even improved the quality you've come to expect from this upcoming release. Some of you 
may be asking about the fate of Crimson Doubles, our once a year Crimson Days playlist. This mode is currently being shifted to the, oh boy, the DCV, but may return in the future. Many thanks to every guardian who has joined us over the years for this event. Crimson decorations may not be hung in the tower, but we have no doubts you will continue to form crimson bonds over the years to come. That's cute. All right, bug tracks. For those of you who may be new to the TWAB, welcome to the player support report. Crucible tokens and fragment quests due to the updates to the vendor progression system, crucible tokens and crucible token gifts are no longer needed and will be deprecated into junk that will delete as a full stack starting in season 13. Additionally, the current stasis fragment quest will be deprecated at the end of season of the hunt. Players are advised to turn in all crucible tokens and crucible token gifts and finish all available stasis fragment quests before season 13 begins. Moving on to known issues, bro. What do we got? Stasis abilities can be difficult to distinguish between enemy and friendly for colorblind players. Interesting, I didn't think about that. The Double Trouble Triumph is unobtainable in the Deep Stone Crypt. The Augment Lockout Timer occasionally resets during the final encounter against Tanix. During the final, uh, this is so boring, I hate reading all this crap. Not the TWAB, just the, the known issues part. This part's boring. During the final fight against the Sanctified Mind in the Garden of Salvation Raid, sometimes a shielded tether box can become tethered instead of the correct glowing tether box. Hunter legs clip through the Ten Grasp Sword Sparrow. Weird. In the Last Wish Raid, the Shirochi puzzle room plates don't work if a Titan Bubble or Warlock Well are placed on them. The Titan Phenotype Plasticity Helm eye clusters no longer glow red. Weekly and daily elemental kill bounties have stopped rotating off of Void when overcharging grenades while using the Voidwalker Top Tree subclass as a Warlock. Super energy stops charging. All right. <laughs> Bird noises intensify. All right, movie of the week. Can't watch it here. Audition tape for Destiny 2 SFX. Oh, is this someone cawing while they use the Hawk Moon? That sounds great. Movie of the week. Deep Stone Lullaby. Oh, violin piano cover. Don't want to play that on the YouTube channel or I will get demonetized, but we'll check that later. And five kills, one clip. Interesting. Okay, as always, if you would like to submit your creation to be featured in a future TWAB, make sure to create a post on the community creation portal of bungo.net. And the artist of the week, people. Boom. Destiny art. Love it. That's some cute ass Destiny art right there. I'm a fan. Very pink and purple. And then Art of the Week, Eris. Ooh. Oh, she's cute. I like that. Cheers, and make sure to tag your content with some form of hashtag Destiny 2 art so we can find you easy. That's it for this week's... <laughs> I'm laughing at my own dumb joke. That's it for this week, folks. Season of the Redacted is almost here. We'll have some patch previews to cover in the TWAB next week, so stop by if you're interested. See you again next week, bright and early on Tuesday morning for that trailer. All right, if you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate you very much for joining me for the weekly TWAB read. If you enjoyed today's content, do me a favor and click the like button if you haven't. And uh, sub to the channel because it's free to do and it helps me and my channel grow. Appreciate you so much. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next time.